Hey y'all, okay, here we go. We're doing it. I hope you can bear with me looking a little bit raggedy today. My hair is drying from its weekly wash and this is what I've been doing lately. I pin most of it up so that the underneath can dry and then I let it down in pieces. So we're half up, half down right now. It's like a true to life, get ready with me. I'm getting ready. I'm nothing if not unpolished and asymmetrical, but I feel like I'm like that most of the time anyway. Hopefully you're used to it by now. So here's what we're doing today. I'm going to combine a get ready with me with a kind of reckoning. So I'm gonna be putting on as much as I can, makeup that's pretty new to me. Some of it you'll have seen before because I don't have enough new makeup or like PR makeup to do like a full face of brand new makeup. But I have some that you've seen, I've like maybe applied on camera before or referenced before, but I haven't really revisited it and I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna keep it. I haven't like given my final review. And I also have some makeup that's actually new, like I haven't shown it on camera yet. So wherever I can, I'm gonna use makeup that's pretty new. And then I'm also gonna use products. I'm gonna be like going through this box which is basically the purgatory box right now like stuff that I have received in PR haven't decided on yet I'm sort of currently reviewing I'm going to use as much from that box as I can to complete my look and then as I go I'm going to decide whether or not any of this stuff that I use today is worth keeping in my permanent collection so I will be giving some like juicy final reviews throughout the video if this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. <laughs> this is me. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Hannah. I really love beautiful things and I like beauty. I enjoy reviewing makeup, but I don't want to have too much of my own makeup. So I like reviewing stuff that comes my way for free that brands send to me, but I always have to go through this process of really putting my feet to the fire and deciding whether or not something is good enough for me to keep. And I have to be pretty rigorous about that so that my personal collection doesn't balloon out of control because I personally really want to have fewer nicer things. So this video is like a piece of that process. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I have skincare on my face, but that's it. And there is something right on top here in the purgatory box that's the kind of thing that I usually do next. I usually put basically like a liquid illuminator on my face as a base for my makeup. And I haven't really gotten to decide about this Becca Light Shifter Doing Tint because I have so much other stuff that's kind of like this that I've been really drawn to and I've been either using or reviewing more than this. So I'm actually gonna apply this today and talk about it. There's a lot going on, you guys. I've been sick. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. I hope it's not too bad. I really, really am almost completely recovered, but the part that's hanging on is like the little clogged ear part, and I feel like that's what you can hear in my voice. It wasn't COVID, I, I got a test, I, I didn't have COVID. It's like this severe cold that the baby got at preschool and everyone in the house has at this point had it. So this is the Becca Light Shifter Doing Tint in Luminary One, the lightest shade. It's like the last thing they released, or I think it was part of their final release before they really began the process of shuttering the business. There's a little bit of coverage to this, like a little, little bit, not a lot. When you blend it out, it definitely becomes sheer. And that's good because the color is definitely, you know, dark for me. Like if I was gonna use a product like this to really tone correct my skin, I would need something much, much lighter than this. But I think that this, I've just put it on this side of my face. This is just a good example of how something can kind of color correct and even one skin tone just by being reflective because it's so so glossy on this side that it's really it's like diffusing the blotchiness diffusing the redness and blotchiness and just making my skin look a lot better and priming it quite well for whatever I put on on it next so it clearly didn't do anything again for like the tone of my face it's still the tone of my face is still much darker than my neck and I'm gonna have to do that with other products but putting it on my face was a really lovely experience. It feels really nice. It's really well formulated. It's a nice creamy layer and it gives a beautiful finish. It reminds me a lot of Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Falls Filter, Auric Glow Lust, not as much of as the Lisa Eldridge or the Maybelline Perfector because those two are more serum-y. It's more like the thicker versions of this kind of thing that I have. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I just have so many products like this because it's one of the things that I really like to review. I have others that I think I'll reach for time and time again instead of this one. And Becca is about to close. So I feel like even though it's fantastic and if I didn't have anything like this, I would be happy to keep it and use it. 
I'm still gonna go ahead and give it away. So I've reckoned with this. I'm putting it in the giveaway box, uh, but I'm not mad at it. Oh, there is something here that is like a complexion product. I was wondering for a second if there's not gonna be anything complexion in the purgatory box, like anything that's still in purgatory that I haven't decided about in terms of whether I'm gonna keep it or give it away. But this is the e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer, and I remember it being really serum-y and light, and that's good for me today. I'm kind of curious what it'll look, what what it will be like if I put sort of a thin sheer layer of this, of a product that's this much brighter color all over my face. This is obviously, obviously supposed to be a dupe for like those YSL products. I feel like it's a pretty good dupe for YSL Touche Cloth because they really have the like skin-like coverage and the sheerness down, but it's nowhere near being like a full coverage concealer. It's definitely sort of a wash or something you would use to brighten points on your face like Touche Cloth. If you need real coverage from your concealer, you won't be happy with this e.l.f. dupe for that. But I feel like it can be used in combination with that. Or for me, I basically used it as like a, a color correcting all over product. Like I, I like this formula for a foundation type of product. And then I like to use something that has a little more coverage when it comes to concealer. And it did a pretty good job. It didn't completely make my face match my, like the really, really pale yellow part of my neck, but it made it, it, made it kind of match my chest. It made it look better, like look all around better. And I, especially in real life, I feel like I could totally just go with this as my complexion for the day. Because I have all this, these cameras and lights on me, I mean all these cameras, this one camera, because I have this camera and all these lights on me, I'm gonna go in with my tried and true Makeup Forever Ultra HD in Pearl, which is a really light color, a really good way to brighten my skin. And I'm just gonna do like a tiny bit in those areas that kind of define the way that the color of the face looks when you look at it. Sometimes I find that I just make like the, the tip of my chin or the middle of my chin match my neck better. That's all I need to do to help diffuse the look of having like this face that's several shades darker than the neck that it's atop. I'm not sure about the staying power of that e.l.f. stuff though. It feels so watery. I definitely want to powder just a little bit to keep my face together for the day. And ZC just sent me this powder in this like elaborate box. It looks like a UFO. Is very heavily scented. It's in, in there was like this powder puff. The top lifts off. There's a powder puff and there's um, a really, I mean, it looks like it's, it's just a pure white powder. So it's like a setting powder, I guess. I mean, I assume that it's a translucent powder. I don't usually use stuff like this. Well, I'll say this for it. It's very pretty. I mean, this whole thing is very pretty. Like this is the kind of thing that when I was little, I imagined I would grow up to like have on my vanity, you know? It's just fun. It's, it's so over the top. It's just glamour in this very, kind of cheesy but fun way. So that's fun. It's very heavily scented of peaches, which is actually kind of nice. Like it's not, it doesn't have that that floral, that icky floral scent. It's got a pretty pleasant scent, but the heavy scent also isn't totally ideal. Um, and I do think that it worked really quite well. I am going to use my Kevin Aquan Neo highlighter to just bronze up my neck a little bit. And sometimes what I like to do, I don't know if I've ever actually talked about this, if I'm using a setting powder like this, and maybe I can use like the puff for it. Sometimes I actually like to put, to powder my neck, cause a lot of times my neck, it'll be sticky still with skincare, you know, or just damp because I'm sweating a little bit, especially here under these lights. So I like to kind of powder my neck and prime it with a powder before going in with this product to make it spread more smoothly. Cause sometimes it gets kind of funny. It gets like caught in my neck wrinkles. I think the underneath layer of my hair might be dry enough to let the whole thing down. I'm gonna give the top layer a zhuzh with some of this hair story powder while it's in this dampened state to encourage it to keep its curl. Okay, let's proceed. Let's do eyes. My brows are freshly dyed. I dyed them this morning. So th this is like, th it's like too much. You know what I mean? But I am gonna try one more time with this e.l.f. Clear Brow and Lash Mascara. I have not had good luck with this. I haven't gotten it to hold my brows. So this is like its last chance. I actually wonder 
if it's supposed to hold your brows. Because it says clear brow and lash mascara. Does that just mean that it's like a clear coat for your brows? Like a clear mascara? Like to make them shiny? It just, it's doing nothing. I, I'm not keeping it. I'm decluttering it. And even for today, I'm not gonna wear it. I'm gonna go, I mean, I'm leaving it on there, but I'm going in with the Refi Brow Sculpt, which is my favorite right now. I think that because my brows are so dark right now, because they're freshly dyed, I feel like I really need to tame them. And that elf thing was just not gonna cut it. Especially the tail of this brow is just completely out of control. All right, it's a lot, but it's okay. It's it's just how, how it goes, like for the first day after they're dyed, it's always just a lot. And then the next five or six days after that, they look perfect. And then they look acceptable for like, two or three weeks after that. Let's use some eye makeup. So ZC also sent me some palettes and I'm definitely gonna keep, I mean, I'm definitely gonna give away one of these untouched because I don't need both of them. And I might give the other, whichever one I do use, I might give it away even after I test it. I might not even keep both of them, but I need to decide today which one I'm actually gonna like test and use because I haven't had a chance to use ZC eyeshadow, like to straight up use it. And so this is exciting. I've tried out a bunch of other stuff from them. Both of these are the Fireworks 16 Colors Eyeshadow Palette. This one is 11, number 11. So that's number 11. And this is number 10. The embossing is so alluring. Gosh, it's actually kind of hard for me to choose. I'm gonna base it on what I wanna do today. And I think that today I want, I actually, this is boring, but I think I wanna kind of do something pretty neutral, just like slap it on and go. So I'll be seeing if this formula can give me a satisfactory eye look with that as the plan. But I don't think I wanna go rosy. This has a bunch of those rosy mattes, neutral, and rosy neutrals, and this has much more neutral sandy mattes. I think that that's what I want for the look today. So I'm gonna go with this one, number 10. I think I'm gonna start with this kind of like cool toned, shiny. Oh, it actually looks amazing. I'm gonna put this all over my lids. I didn't even see this when I was looking at the palette. Look at that. My level of excitement about this palette just went way up. I was sort of just expecting to be like, mm, let's see if these eyeshadows work, color story is great, blah, blah, blah. But this, this is like if I turned into an eyeshadow and you swatched me, this is what I would look like on your finger. It's not the most powdery, most satisfying eyeshadow to work with. It feels a little hard. It might partly be because I got really excited about the color and I was like pushing really hard as I was digging into it to get the finger swatch. But I'm gonna see, oh yeah, it, it picks up much better with a brush. So like pushing it in, I think maybe it's just kind of a little bit creamy. Pushing hard on it with my finger was causing it to compact a little bit. But when I put the brush into it, it, um, you know, it mussed up the surface a little bit and it got a good bit of pigment on the brush, so that's good to know. All right, I'm gonna put some on the lower lash line of the same color. I would be happy with just this color all over, all day, every day for the rest of my life, but because I'm supposed to be testing the entire palette, I'll try some of the other shades too. I really, really, really like this color. Okay, I'm going to use some of the mattes first, some of the, just like neutral mattes, what most people use as transition shades, you know, and I'm going to do that so that I can tell you if they work well, because I know that a lot of people use that kind of thing. Yeah, it's working. The pigment's there, the blend. Yeah, I'm gonna use this dark brown in the outer corner. Well, it's turned into kind of a lot. It's kind of a lot, you guys. Um, Here's what though, it's, it's too much actually. I feel like I need to put some layers, some washes of shine on it. And I'm gonna start with this. Look how juicy this looks this shadow right here. Wow, this is like gold flake. This is this is giving me like gold palette realness right here. It's like out of control. 
gosh, it's funny. ZC, I don't think about them that much. Like they, I try, I love the aesthetic, this like crazy, I love the embossing and like the ornate quality. And so I've reviewed some of their products like back in the day. And then this just randomly showed up on my doorstep and I was like, oh, okay, I'll give it a try. And I was just not expecting to be able to do something like this. And so that's really exciting. And I do have, I am affiliated with them. I do have a discount code that I always leave in my description box. So if you, if this is exactly what you've been looking for and you decide to buy something from ZC, just make sure you use that because it'll give you a discount. But you know, as I always say, and as is true in my life too, you may already have what you need to create a look like this. So if you love this look, I would say the first thing that I recommend is trying to create it using what you already have. I'd love to put like more of a sheen over part of the look, but I don't know if any of these shadows are sheer enough for that. Maybe this champagne one. It looked, it looked like there was one in the other palette that might be sheer enough, so maybe I should just... Yeah, the other palette has like these, has one of these sort of pressed glitters that is like iridescent. I'm gonna just go ahead and use a little bit of it. Mm, well, that's like just glitter. That's not really giving me what I wanted. I wanted like a, a shadow, an eye shadow that had that sheerness. Oh, it's kind of doing something. I just fully dropped it on the floor, but it's actually fine. Actually, it is kind of giving me, it's giving me that sheer wash of reflective particles that I like on my brow bone. It's just, it's very multicolored. It's iridescent and it's like pink and iridescent. So especially in real life, it's adding something to the look. Wasn't totally expecting that. I mixed in a little bit of this pale gold shadow from the original palette that I was working with, um, just to tone, tone down like the pink a little bit. Eyeliner, there might be an eyeliner in the purgatory box. Yeah, there is, there's this, there are actually two eyeliners from Urban Decay. There's this purple one and this green one. Which one is gonna go? I know I'm gonna keep the purple one because I've loved using it. So I think I should use the green one because I'm still undecided about it. Okay, that totally decided it for me. I'm not gonna keep this. It's like, it's a light bright green. It's like lighter than my makeup and lighter than my lashes. And so it adds a pop of color on the lash line, but it doesn't frame the eyes. And I usually, even when I'm going for a pop of color, I'm going for a pop of color that frames the eyes. So I'm gonna keep the purple one, but I'm not gonna keep that green one. I mean, it's fine for today. It's okay for today, but I'm, I'm going to give it away. I'll sharpen it up so that I can sanitize it and then I'll give it away. There's no mascara in Purgatory, so I'm just going to apply this mascara that I have in my own makeup collection. This is the Gucci Mascara L'Obscure. I really like it. It's, I mean, my favorite mascara actually of all time. It's not really giving me what the first tube gave me. I think my lashes might not be in as good of shape right now as they were the first time I had this mascara. So uh, I am doing a lot of layering with it. What should we do on the rest of the face? There are actually some things here that I can reckon with even though I'm not trying them today. Maybe I should have been doing that as I went through. The e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer and the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer, I really like. I'm gonna keep those. The Merit Complexion Sticks, I could have used those today instead of the e.l.f. one. I love the formulas of these, and so I have actually found myself reaching for them a bunch of times, even though both shade, both of the lightest shades are too dark for me. But I, I think that I'm gonna go ahead and, well, maybe I'll see, as long as my sister's here, because my sister's in LA, her skin isn't quite as fair as mine. Maybe I'll see if either one of these matches her or maybe even both of them. Maybe she could use them together interchangeably. If that's the case, I'll give them to her for sure. I think it's the kind of thing she would really love. And she did tell me she was like looking for something complexion. But if that doesn't work out, I'll probably keep them and just use them up. There's so little product in each one of these anyway, it's not gonna take me long. I have these two single eyeshadows from Urban Decay. This is the new packaging of their single eyeshadows. This red one is called Floored, and this super shiny one is Space Cowboy. I'm definitely gonna keep Space Cowboy. I really love the wet look shine of that. But Floored, I, I don't need to keep this. I like the packaging, I like this color. I used it once, it performed beautifully. I just don't need like a free floating single package eyeshadow in this color. I even have one 
kind of like this from Yes Style. It's like a in a pot, you know what I mean? Like one of those really, really shiny foiled things in a pot that's similar to this. I mean, it would just, not only would it be a double, but it's like, I, I if I need this color, I can get it from a single or from a palette or something. And this is a nice little thing to be able to give away, especially to someone who doesn't have that much makeup. Okay, I've got to put something on my cheeks and something on my lips. I do have this, another thing from ZC that I could put on my cheeks. It's like a, a compact, Oh my gosh, look at this, you guys. I rarely feel like a thing is too pretty to use because I love to make use of a thing. You know what I mean? I just love the feeling of like digging my fingers into it and I like it when something is being put to the use for which it was intended. But this really feels too pretty to use. I don't know if I can handle it today using this. I need some time, I need to take some time to decide what I'm gonna do about this, if I'm gonna give it away untouched or if I'm going to use it. It it feels, it's plastic, you know what I mean? So it doesn't feel as incredibly ornate in person as it looks, but it's still really unique, really fun. Let's use the Kaja Cheeky Stamp again, and I'll use the other color. I'm not gonna stamp the other color because I haven't stamped it and um, I don't wanna mess up the stamp just in case I do decide to give this away. So this is in the color Bossy. If I do give this away, it would have to be to like a friend or family member because you, this can't be sanitized, this kind of like cushion product. Okay, it's it's really pretty. It's giving me that kind of like corally sunburn flesh, but I don't think I'm gonna keep it. I think I liked Saucy better. Saucy is the one that I used in the other video and it's a little more mauve. This one's like a little more coral, but the way it reads on me, this one reads more pink. And this one kind of read more like a natural sun-kissed look. So I'm definitely gonna give away Bossy, the one I just applied. I put a very light layer on so that it wouldn't be too much with this eye look. And I'm gonna hang out to Saucy for the time being and keep using it and um, maybe decide about it in a little while. Ah, here's a new lip product that I actually haven't talked about on camera yet. Although I've talked about the Persona gloss before, I really love, I recently, I have had two of their glosses for a long time. Honey, which I recently decluttered, and Coral, which is one of my all-time favorite glosses, like the best of the best of the best, I really love it. So they sent me another one, it's in the shade Twilight, and they have a feeling that it's gonna have the sheerness of Coral. Honey is like a little bit more pigmented than I would want for a brown gloss like that. Twilight looks like it has that sort of golden orangey brown quality, but it's more sheer, and I really love the sheer quality of the Coral gloss from Persona. This also has some gold glitter in it, as you could probably see in the close-up, but it doesn't translate to the lips as like pieces of glitter at all. It just looks really, really shiny. You absolutely can't feel the glitter on your lips at all either. It's just like a more neutral, more clear version of coral. And so I really like that. I'm gonna keep it. That's the look, heavy on the eyes, light everywhere else. Let's recap. I am definitely gonna be decluttering a number of these things. So the Becca primer illuminating thing, the green eyeliner, the e.l.f. clear brow mascara, the Urban Decay shadow, which I didn't use, but you know, I talked about it, and also this cheeky stamp from Kaja. I'm gonna be hanging on to these e.l.f. products, this Persona gloss, and this other single from Urban Decay. And I think that the e.l.f. product too, this is another thing where there's probably really very, very little in the tube. You know what I mean? Like this kind of thing. It's probably gonna run out pretty quickly, and I think that I can probably get good use out of it. But this is another thing I might offer to my sister along with the Merit Complexion Stick. The ZC products, I think I need some time to decide about. I was fully expecting to just use one eyeshadow palette today and then be like, it's good or it's bad, but either way, I'm decluttering it. I mean, I was expecting to either tell you it was good or tell you that it was bad, but either way, I was expecting not to keep it. However, I'm really, really stunned by the look that I got, so I think I need time to decide about the one that I decided to use. The other one, even though I dipped into it for a little bit of glitter, the other one I think that I can happily give away. I also did, I had forgotten, I stuck my finger in that green one right when I opened it just to see how it would swatch. It's lovely, it's almost untouched, and I think that I can happily give this one away as a gift because I definitely don't need to keep two ZC eyeshadow palettes, even if I do decide to keep that one. A number of additions to my giveaway box, which is always nice. 
And I really am happy with the look. I mean, I went more overboard than I expected to with the eyes, but that's actually usually best practices on a day when one's brows have been really, really darkly dyed and are, I don't know, serving like Sharpie vibes. And I don't know what I'm gonna do about this blush with the, with the peonies on it. It's, this kind of thing gets me all tied up in knots. It's like, I can't handle myself. But that's a problem for another day. On this day, the video has come to an end. I hope that you enjoyed watching this. I'm really grateful to you for being here. And I really, really hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself because that's what will make you the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>